we light this candle and remember how once in the midst of the ordinary a messenger of light declared that God's salvation was dawning. Still stunned by the faithful example of one young woman's let it be to me, we offer ourselves in awestruck anticipation of what our living sacrifice might yet become. Let these simple flames of light each be our reminder of the profound potential of ordinary lives offered in service to the Most High. God's purpose accomplished in the midst of human frailty, not because we suppose that this world's salvation can be wrought through our endeavour alone. But as those who have seen God's miracle of grace, we believe that in these broken vessels, God's rich treasure can reside. Ours is the joy of knowing that even in the midst of human struggle, your kingdom still comes and salvation still dawns. And though the road may at times be hard and demanding to travel, its purpose and destination are always secure. morning and welcome to our sing-along carol service. I hope you enjoyed listening to the International Star Songsters and Jingle Bells. And then I hope you found the readings for the fourth Sunday in Advent encouraging. However, I do remember a couple of years ago referring to the lighting of the four candles and then looking at the grinning face of Morris, realising I'd sounded a bit like Ronnie Barker. But today is a day of celebration, hence that fanfare arrangement, fanfare and celebration. We're going to continue that theme with our opening carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And for this, we're going to join the International Staff Band, the International Staff Songsters, the Congregation of the Royal Albert Hall and the Royal Trumpeters. So let us sing along and give praises to this newborn king. Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
you were able to join in and sang along to your heart's content. Now, of course, for the last two years, this has been the Sunday we have joined with Castlehold. We've had a wonderful time of sharing some great carols and each other's company. We can't do that this year, but I pre-recorded the message for them and they will be showing that as part of their morning worship. And after we've had our second carol, we in turn will have a message from Adrian. Now, of course, there was no real dramatic fanfare above the stable that night. It was a holy night. It was a silent night. And perhaps you've guessed our second carol. Let us sing Silent Night. Well, hello, and a uh, very warm Christmas greeting uh, from Castle Hall Baptist Church uh, to you all at, at the Salvation Army Citadel. Now, as you know, over the last couple of years, we are on the 20th of December, we have shared a service. Uh, this year, unfortunately, we just can't do that. And uh, I suspect that as churches, we both feel a sense of loss uh, uh, with regard to that. So uh, Rodney has come up, the, came up with the idea that um, he and I uh, would exchange pre-recorded videos, in other words, going live via satellite, uh, to share a thought and reflection with uh, one another's, as it were, a respective representatives uh, of the body of Christ. So uh, speaking at uh, the manse up the road uh, from Rodney and Lillian, a little bit further uh, down the road, but a much nicer manse, um, uh, I bring greetings from Castle Hold Baptist Church. Well, do you like my Christmas jump up? I bring this out uh, every year uh, and the Christmas cracker joke that goes with it is that this a jumper reflects my colourful personality. 
I wonder if for you 2020 has been a year drained of colour. It's been a year that's been reduced to black and white and a rather grainy image as is also reflected uh, in this particular uh, video. That we have all felt a sense of loss and a sense of emptiness. That loss of course has not been uh, evenly spread. For some of you, you've actually suffered bereavement, perhaps the loss of work, or other significant and no less uh, important other forms of emotional uh, and psychological loss uh, as well. It, this has been a year, I think, that when we thought that we had something in our hands, it actually just slipped through our fingers. Well, I wonder if you've come across the poem Treasures by Martha uh, Snell uh, Nicholson. I'd like to uh, read this to you. One by one he took them from me, all the things I valued most, until I was empty-handed, every glittering toy was lost. And I walked earth's highways grieving in my rags and poverty, till I heard his voice inviting, lift your empty hands to me. So I held my hands toward heaven and he filled them with a store of his own transcendent riches till they could contain no more. And at last I comprehended with my stupid mind and dull that God could not pour his riches into hands already full. Well, we know from Joel chapter 2 and verse uh, 25, where it says, I think this is it in the King James Version, I will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten. And this is my prayer, and this is my hope for any of you within the Salvation Army, perhaps all of you in different ways. For those of you who have suffered loss, perhaps very unexpectedly like all of us uh, all of us this year for those of you who perhaps have found this year quite empty who may feel uh, somewhat like the clock behind me that time has gone backwards this year rather than moving forward my prayer is that you will lift empty hands to god in prayer and praise and my hope my very confident hope is that he will pour his transcendent riches uh, into you. The theme for our Christmas season at Castle Hall Baptist Church uh, is hope remains. And that's a further thought as well, that the hope that God pours into us, into empty hands at the end of this year, is a hope that will remain with us as together uh, as churches, different but equally important representatives of God's kingdom that we will take into uh, 2021. So in a year which is dark, grainy, black and white rather than colour, nevertheless, our hope can be in God. So let's come together in prayer. Loving Lord Jesus, Advent God, we have suffered loss this year. Nothing in our hands we bring simply to thy cross we cling. So together, at the Salvation Army and at Castle Hall Baptist Church, fill these hands with hope. And when all of our other treasures are lost, may we know that hope remains. Christmas blessings from Castle Hall Baptist Church. And we wish you all at the Salvation Army Citadel as well a very happy, prosperous and fruitful and colourful new year. Thank you. Now, it's a bit much. Thank you, Adrian, for being part of our service this morning and your thoughts as this year comes to a close. Now it's the turn of the songsters. We can listen or we can join in as they bring us the carol, Rise Up Shepherd.
I don't know if you caught the news last week, which showed our territorial leaders meeting the Queen along with other members of the royal family. They were there as part of a group being thanked for the work that was being done by volunteers during this year's pandemic. In case you didn't see it, and I think perhaps with extra footage, here is a video from THQ, and this will be followed by the band arrangement, Carolcade. The Salvation Army was invited by Her Majesty the Queen to Windsor Castle. A band from Regent Hall set the mood by playing some favourite Christmas carols. The event was organised as a thank you to charities and key workers for their work during the pandemic and over Christmas. The Queen has expressed her gratitude to all the members and volunteers of the Salvation Army, but also all volunteers wherever they have come from. Jill and I were privileged to be the representatives of all the voluntary agencies, of all the voluntary work that is going on up and down the country. Our Corps have been working hard with their food banks, uh, with their work with the lonely, uh, the visitation out to people who have been uh, isolated and quarantined. So the work of the Army acknowledged by the Queen and a grateful thanks uh, to all who have been able to help the work of the Army. The Queen loved the carols, she loved uh, being able to take part in that way and uh, enjoyed it very, very much indeed, as did other members of the Royal Family. So it's been a great evening.
I thought it was good to see this royal recognition for all the work that has gone on up and down the country, bringing relief and a listening ear to many during this year. And yes, that includes us here on the Isle of Wight and hot off the press, a response to one of the food hampers that went out this week. Thank you so much. You have helped us greatly. We didn't realise what the parcel contained. The pocket cross will be with me now always to remind me that there is good left in the world. You have made us so happy as we are experiencing a difficult time in our household. This is the true meaning of Christmas. Hallelujah. But at this time, I had chosen to sing two songs. Um, Charlie Green singing Rejoice with Exceeding Great Joy, followed by Happy Birthday, Dear Jesus, brought to us by the Chompson Singing Company. But Lillian got in there first, so I had to find another song from Charlie Green to entertain us this morning. Santa Claus is coming to town. A bit different. And I can confirm, although I was in the Chompson Singing Company, this record was made a long time after I left. I hope you enjoy these two songs. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, he's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, and he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good, for goodness sake. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Now let's hear that band! sleeping and he knows when you're awake he knows if you've been bad or good so be good for goodness sake you better watch out you better not cry you better not pout i'm telling you why santa claus is coming to town you better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming, I mean the big fat man with the long white beard, he's coming to town.
those last two songs remind us that this is a time to be joyful and happy, a time to share presents, for that's what you do on somebody's birthday. So in fact, there is an argument on Christmas Day that we should have jelly and ice cream. No, I don't think so. But it's our turn to sing again, a lovely carol, The First Noel.
I thought last week's nativity carol service was just perfect. See the pictures of your nativity scenes and then hear familiar voices and maybe some unfamiliar voices, but definitely voices that we have missed during the year bring us the readings. It helped tell the Christmas story afresh. But it isn't a fairy story. It's not that kind of a story. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Jesus wasn't born to be a king. He was born king. We claim that in the opening carol. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. His kingship was there from the beginning of time. We know this from those immortal words from the beginning of the Gospel of St John. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. This newborn king was born with a purpose, and that purpose would be finally revealed on a cross. For the next line we sang earlier says this, Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. In fact, this one verse could describe who Christ is, what his purpose is and how we should react. The king above all kings arrival was proclaimed by angels. He would preach mercy and peace. The result of which would be reconciliation between ourselves and God. And then all the nations would be joyful. So we would be joyful. And then we would go and tell others Christ has been born. And because of all this, we should rejoice with exceeding great joy. And if Lynn had, hadn't heard, chose that song last week, this is where it would have come. If you do, cast your minds back to last week and remember the passion that Charlie Green puts into the song. The key changes that lift the song up and up. Well, the news of Christmas should let us rise above the circumstances of life. Yes, we need to take care, especially times such as these but we also need to live in the joy of the Christmas message. How we celebrate Christmas this year may be very different but the message of Christmas hasn't changed in over 2,000 years. There is joy still to be claimed. Before we sing about that joy in our final song let us reflect while we sing quietly the lovely words that still remind us to rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, my people. Rejoice, 
rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. I hope you enjoyed singing along this morning. We go out in the same way we started, proclaiming the arrival of the child of Bethlehem that was born king. So we sing, joy to the world, the Lord has come. And all the Salvationists said, hallelujah.
Let us pray. Lord, however we celebrate Christmas this year, may we be reminded of the true joy that is in our hearts. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to us. May we claim it, may we live it, and may we show it to a world this day and into the future. Amen. Oh, uh -huh.